Welcome back to day 9 of random math stuff. Here's a magic trick, take a coin and a hole through paper, and even though the hole is clearly smaller, you can still fit the coin through by bending the paper. A few of you might remember this because I made a YouTube short on it back when I had 100 subscribers, but today I'll touch on that topic a little more. The reason this magic trick works is because you can change the shape of the hole, you can stretch it from a circle to an ellipse, which will let the coin through. In fact, you can turn the hole into any other shape as long as the perimeter does not increase. This is the key point. The perimeter is stuck. No matter what you do, it will forever be less than or equal to pi times the diameter of the hole. Why? Because if the perimeter has increased, that would mean that somewhere along the border of the hole, the paper has ripped, which is against the rules. Take a second to visualize this. So, to summarize, as long as you're not breaking the perimeter rule, the hole can be turned into any shape you'd like, which allows it to fit objects that otherwise wouldn't go through. Alright, now that that makes sense, let's answer the general question. What shapes can go through this hole? Our end goal here will be to find some sort of criteria that the object might satisfy in order to fit through the hole. Hopefully that criteria ends up being nice and simple. Okay, with that in mind, let's start. The coin magic trick seems to suggest that we should find the shadow of the shape, also called the orthogonal projection. The reason the shadow is important is because that's the shape we want the hole to be. As you can see, the coin's shadow is this thin rectangle, and the hole must be that shape, otherwise the coin won't fit through. But how do we know whether or not the hole can turn into the shape of the shadow? Using the perimeter rule, of course. If the hole has more perimeter than the shadow, then it'll be able to turn into the shadow. So that's the answer to our question. If the hole perimeter is greater than or equal to the shadow perimeter, then the object will fit through. Otherwise, it won't fit. There's just one tiny problem with our solution. It's completely wrong. You may have figured this out already and are currently yelling at me in the comment section. And you might be wondering, why would you include the incorrect solution in the video? Because this is what I thought the solution was at first, and then I slowly made adjustments until it was finally correct. And if I include my failed experiments, you learn the same way I did. If you feel that your time is being wasted, which I completely understand, there are hundreds of other math channels out there that show the correct solution, and are higher quality anyways. Okay, enough talking, what's wrong with the solution? First problem, the term shadow is incredibly vague. Take this pencil. The shadow has quite a lot of perimeter, but by simply rotating the pencil, the perimeter decreases drastically. This new perimeter is the one we want, because we don't need to fit the pencil through like this, we want to fit it through like this. So this means we need to check every possible shadow of our object, from every possible angle, and find the shadow with the least perimeter. We're still not done, there's another problem. What if a ninja takes our pencil and slices it open with a sword? Now the pencil's cross section looks like Pac-Man. An important consequence of our pencil looking like Pac-Man is, the shadow's perimeter has now increased. So if our hypothesis were right, then the hole would need to be bigger. But that's ridiculous, we can still fit the pencil through the hole that we used pre-ninja, so no size increase is required. Here's the solution. Instead of calculating the perimeter of the shadow, we should calculate the perimeter of the shadow's convex hole, which is basically the shape you get if you wrap a rubber band around the shadow. Basically what this does is fill in the object's holes so that the cut from the ninja no longer exists. So now, our new and updated process of determining whether an object fits through the hole is. First, find the perimeter of the hole or its circumference. Same thing. Second, take the object to a place with bright sunlight. Third, look at the shadow. Fourth, find the perimeter of the shadow's convex hole. Again, that's the rubber band thing. Fifth, move the shape to a new orientation and repeat steps 3 and 4 over and over and over again until you've tested every single orientation. Sixth, find the minimum perimeter out of all the orientations you've tested. If this minimum possible perimeter is smaller than the hole's perimeter, congratulations, your object can fit through the hole. And finally, we are done with this godforsaken problem. Wait, why is there still two minutes left in the video? We're not done. What about this shape? Its shadow implies that this is the smallest hole that can fit it, but it's not. You can make it much smaller at the cost of having to rotate the object as you fit it through the hole. And now we see where we went wrong. We never accounted for the fact that the object could rotate. We just assumed that it would stay in one orientation the whole way. But now the path forwards is clear. We must look at cross sections, not shadows. Infinitely many cross sections, continuously lined up with one another so that they slice through every inch of the object. And we must do this infinitely many times. Each time, we must calculate the perimeter of infinitely many cross sections, and out of those, we must find the one with the greatest perimeter. We then write down the perimeter, choose a different set of infinitely many cross sections, and repeat infinitely. Once we have our list of infinitely many perimeters, we will choose the smallest value in our list, which will be the perimeter of our hole. And there we have it, the smallest possible circular hole that can fit our object. 
But we're not stopping there. What about other shapes of holes? We know that any circular hole can turn into any other hole as long as the perimeter does not increase, but this does not work the other way around. Take this star-shaped hole. It clearly cannot expand into a circular hole this size even though the perimeters are the same. The solution, again, is to take the convex hull of each hole and find the perimeter of that instead. And there we have it. Finally, the full solution. Oh, and remember to take the convex hull when calculating the perimeter of cross-sections. Well, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.